the real orphan is the one who has no knowledge and he doesn't have mannerism to couple it with. If you don't have knowledge and you don't have manners, you are still upon your natural state that you should have left before. Coming out of the womb of your mother not knowing anything. So you haven't left that stage. Now you're, mashallah, 20, 30, 50. You should have gained knowledge and that oppression which goes against the characteristics of student knowledge, they all should go. Sincerity will make you say what you don't know. I don't know this thing. Don't ask me. I don't have knowledge of this matter. And Imam Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi, and Ahmed, four Imams. All of them, when they didn't know a matter, it was easy for them to say, La Adiri, I don't know. Because they were sincere people. They knew if they didn't know to speak about Allah's religion with no knowledge, for them it was something very bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He gives you knowledge, if you go and act upon the one that was given to you, Allah will give you more. Wallillahi mathalul a'la. You acted upon it, okay, give it more. Acted upon it, give it more. Salaf used to say this. Knowledge calls for actions. Action, come here, he says. If actions don't doesn't come, knowledge leaves. وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد um, I'm sure that there is in the crowd people who are more fit and more able to talk about this topic than I but inshallah ta'ala من باب قولي الناظر but from the angle of the great scholar of hadith Suyuti what he said, Wa Mayu Hadith Wahunaka Aula Falisa Kurhano Hila Falola. Hadahu al Arajahu was Sawabu, Ahden Nabi you had the Tassihabu, Wafisihabi had the Tel Atbaru, Yakadu Fihi Ayuran Ijmau. That at the time of the Messenger Ali Salatu was Salam, there were, or in the presence of the Prophet Ali Salatu was Salam, it did happen, it occurred where times the companions spoke in the presence of the Prophet. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was with the Prophet one day and a man came and he asked the Prophet for the interpretation of a dream and the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, he was about to respond to the man and Abu Bakr said, Ya Rasulullah, can I try to answer this question or can I try to interpret the dream? The Prophet said, go ahead Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr, he interpreted the dream and then he looked at the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasulullah, did I get it right? And the Prophet said to him, you got some of it right and you got some of it wrong. So it can happen that someone who is low in knowledge and virtue can sometimes speak in the presence of someone who is greater and higher in knowledge. So I'm sure and I'm aware of some people I can even see now who inshallah ta'ala more fit than I am in talking about this topic and any other topic. So may Allah forgive me for my shortcoming and my mistakes. To proceed, the topic that I want to talk about, or that um, I am scheduled to speak about, is to speak about students of knowledge and the categories and the types that we all are. As you know, Allah wa Taala is يعني, عطاه, He's giving in terms of provision, rizq is ala maratiba shatta. It's of different levels. There are some people who are very wealthy. Allah gives them a lot of wealth. And there's another person who doesn't have much wealth. And it doesn't matter what religion that person is that's been given the wealth. As Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَلَوْلَا أَنْ يَكُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَا يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبُيُوتِهِمْ سُخُفًا مِنْ ثُبَّةً وَمَعَارِجَ عَلَيْهَا يَظْهَرُونَ وَلِبُيُوتِهِمْ أَبْوَابًا وَسُرُرًا عَلَيْهَا يَتَّكِئُونَ وَزُخْرُفًا وَإِن كُلُّ ذَلِكَ لَمَّا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ and Allah is saying in this verse that he, he gives to the Muslims and the non-Muslims the dunya because the dunya doesn't mean anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as for the akhirah, wal akhiratu inda rabbika lil muttaqeen. Akhirah is only for who? The righteous people. May Allah make us from those people. And in there, Al-Imam al-Dhahabi rahimahullah, before Al-Imam al-Dhahabi ibn Abdul Bar mentions it in his kitab Jam'u Bayani al-Ilmi wa Fadli, 
that knowledge is also from those provision Allah He selects and He chooses. And Imam al tufi rahimahullah, he says about the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah knows where He's going to place His message. And Imam al tufi said, and Allah knows who is going to make a prophet. He said this is the same when it comes to people of knowledge. Allah knows who He's going to select for this knowledge. Because this knowledge is what, my brothers and sisters, it's the inheritance of the Prophet sallallahu من سلك طريقا يلتمس فيه علما سهل الله له به طريقا إلى الجنة. and in that famous hadith of Abi Darda في مسند أحمد he mentions وإن العلماء ورثة الأنبياء وإن الأنبياء لم يورثوا درهما ولا دينارا وإنما ورثوا العلم فمن أخذه أخذ بحظ وافر. so the knowledge is whose inheritance the prophets. so Allah doesn't give everybody the same. He, the type, people are different. That's why you find some people are ulama. Some people are lower than that. Some of the people are even lower than that. وَهَكَذَا Within the scholars, hatta, they're not the same. There are within the scholars, some who are mujtahid mutlaq, unrestricted scholar of ijtihad. And some are not. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Utaymin is majmu'ul fatawa when he was asked about the madahib, the madhabs of the kutub al-sitta, the six books, books of hadith. Bukhari, Muslim, Abi Dawood, Tirmid, Ibn Majah, and Nasa'i. He was asked, what is their fiqh madhab? And he mentioned that Abu Dawood, okay, and Imam Abu Dawood, he said, he is mujtahid mutlah. He is the only jihad. And then Imam al-Bukhari. But he said about Imam Muslim, he's not of a particular madhab. Or the other ones. They're not of a particular madhab, but they are not also mujtahid mutlah, he said. They follow the deen wherever they find it. Lakin, so within these four, even within these six imams, they are what? Different maratib and different levels. So this is why this topic, inshallah ta'ala, is very important to understand the levels within knowledge. What category you fall into when you're a student of knowledge. I want to start by saying, Sufyan al-Thawri said a very powerful statement. About the virtue of knowledge. He said, Laysa shay'un afdal ba'dal fara'id. There is nothing after the obligatory acts more virtuous, more greater than seeking knowledge. Ahmed ibn Hanbal also said something similar. He said that the virtue of seeking knowledge is the best liman for who lakin sahat niyatuhu, the one whose intention is good. If you don't have intention, then it's an act with no benefit. Because every righteous deed that we do, the first condition for it is what? شَرْطُ قَبُولِ السَّعِي أَنْ يَجْتَمِعَ فِيهِ إِصَابَةٌ وَإِخْلَاصٌ مَعَ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَرْشِ لَا سِوَاهُ مُوَافِقًا شَرْعٍ الَّذِي ارْتَضَاهُ Every act we do, everything that we say from the ibadat, if it's not done with sincerity and in accordance to the sunnah, is no benefit. صح? فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Ibn Kathir on the commentary of that verse, he mentions these two conditions. What does he say? فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا That is according to the Sunnah, he said. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا means not ikhlas, sincerity. تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكُ وَعَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتُ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا What did Fudayr Nuhiyad say? أَخْلَاصُهُ وَأَصْوَبُهُ أَخْلَاصُهُ means sincerity and also in accordance to the Sunnah. So inshallah ta'ala, where does the difference, okay, category of people occur when it comes to seeking knowledge? Knowledge stands on two things, that's it. Okay, in terms of um, having knowledge, the first one is fahmun, and the second one is hivbun, memorization. And the level of people just vary from that. So we all together. And which one is the most important one from the two? If you have to choose one, yeah, yeah. If you have to choose, you can't take both. You have to, you're in a situation where you have to choose one, which was more important. Faham is more important. To have understanding. 
ولذلك وللأسف الشديد the sad reality is if people see a person who's memorized a lot by default they think he is الله أكبر حفظ الدواوين السنة which is something good but doesn't mean he has understanding I will together brothers does that make sense محفوظات is one thing and فهم is also another thing you might find a scholar who hasn't memorized that much لكن his فهم is what تقيق and one of those great scholars like that الشيخ محمد بن صالح العثيمين الشيخ محمد بن صالح العثيمين رحمه الله رحمة واسعة him and Sheikh Abdullah ibn Jibreel had a discussion private discussion فقطو. I read it in the Tarjama of Sheikh ibn Uthaymin after the discussion finished Sheikh ibn Uthaymin said to ibn Jibreel أنت أحفظ مني the hadith and the nusus you mashallah is stronger than me in it and then he said to him وأنت أفقه مني in terms of understanding that, you are more faster. You get, I bring one hadith, you extract more than I can extract from it. Are we all together, brothers? So you might see someone who's got mahfudat and all of this, but it doesn't always mean that understanding comes. Understanding is something else. It's a unique giving of Allah wa ta'ala. That's why Umar ibn Khattab wrote a letter to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. And some of the scholars like Ibn al-Qayyim in his kitab, Ilam al waqiin he mentioned that all he wrote on that letter was al-fahm al-fahm and that's it. That's all he said to him. He said to him, understand, understand. Where did he get that from? He got it from the ayah where Allah says, Allah says, we give parables in the Quran. We don't, we what? Yani Allah gives parables. And Allah is not shy of giving parables in the Quran. Allah gives a lot of parables in the Quran. He talks about the disbelievers and يعني, what type of uh, uh, their actions, what it's equal to. In, he gives examples for people to understand. So Allah is saying that he's not shy to do that. But Allah says the only people who can understand when we give parables, what's behind it, what's the meaning in it, are those people who have knowledge. Amr ibn Murra, go to the tafsir of Ibn Abi Hatim. On this ayah, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ Amr ibn Murrah said, إِذَا قَرَأْتُ آيَةً فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ If I read a verse from the book of Allah, وَلَمْ أَفْهَمْهَا and I don't understand it, بَكَيْتُ عَلَى نَفْسِي I cry myself. Because Allah here is saying, وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ وَمَا يَعْقِلُهَا إِلَّا الْعَالِمُونَ The opposite to the people of knowledge is what? An ignorant person. So if I didn't understand this parable, if I didn't understand the meaning in this verse, I've been put to, pushed to the category of who? Those people are what? Who are in ignorance. Also Allah says in another ayah, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا جَمْحَرَ A large number of the Aymatu Salaf, they said, يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ هي means الفهم. Allah gives understanding to whoever he wills. And whoever Allah has given understanding to, he's, been given, he's given this person a lot. Actually, Allah, he compared two prophets and gave virtue to one prophet over the other prophet only because of the understanding. Allah says, Who's the son here? Who's the, who's the son and who's the father? Sulaiman is the son. And Dawood is the father. Who did Allah give the, who did Allah praise here? Yeah? So why did he praise Sulaiman for? Allah mentioned it. The reason why Allah praised Sulaiman over his father Dawood is because he had extra understanding. And this is the one I encourage brothers at this time that we're living in to really focus on. To give time to understanding and يعني, internalizing what Allah and His Messenger intend by what they're saying. So inshallah ta'ala, I want to go through الكريم, two things that I personally believe when I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives me and all of you guys the strength to follow through with this point inshallah ta'ala. I believe the levels of knowledge that's given to people go back to two things. If Allah يعني, makes a scholar, a mujtahid, a alim, it goes back to these two things. 
and you tend to find students either have one or none. A lot of students who are seeking knowledge or are taking this path. Or they only focus on one, they abandon the other one. Or what they tend to do is they don't focus on neither of the two. And all they do is they just wear certain clothes and tayyib, yani, they use those phrases. And that's it. He's online arguing and debating with other people. And he thinks that's going to make him what? That's going to make him from the people of knowledge and it's not. Sah brothers. The two things that you need, brothers, is صِفَاتٌ يَنْبَغِي لِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ أَنْ يَتَحَلَّى بِهَا There are characteristics as a student of knowledge you need to have qualities. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go through those characteristics بِذْنِ اللَّهِ الْكَرِيمِ The second thing is الْمَنْهَجِيَّةِ الْعِلْمِيَّةِ فِي تَحْصِيلِ الْعِلْمِ You also have to have a methodology that you tread on in order to gain knowledge. Those two is where the levels vary. Either the characteristics are not there, and this person has followed a good manhaj, maybe had a good teacher, maybe, maybe had good parents that taught him. MashaAllah, he's got a lot of ma'lumat and information, but when you look at his characteristics and his attributes, he doesn't have these qualities. And وَلَيْسَ مِنْ حِيَزِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ He's not going to be considered to be from the what? The circle and the room is not going to be in the people of knowledge. Even though there's a lot of information, but he's not from the people of knowledge. That's why Dhabi Rahimahullah says, Wallahi laysa ha'ulai min ahli al-ilm. These people are wallahi not from the people of knowledge. After he gave some of those characteristics that I'm going to mention today, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah ta'ala, those characteristics are mainly six. And it goes back to those six. And we're going to try to, inshallah ta'ala, study those six. And then we're going to go into the second point, which is the methodology, inshallah ta'ala. The characteristics, the first is sincerity. One of the things that a talib ilm, a person of knowledge, he gives importance to is sincerity. Ikhlasuna lillahi saffi al-qalba min iradatin siwahu fahdhar ya fatim. There's nobody else in your heart when you're doing this action. Who are you doing it for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lan yanana Allah luhumuha wa la dimauha wa la ki yanaluhu taqwa minkum. The action that you're doing is not going to reach Allah if there's no intention behind it. In another ayah, Allah says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةَ Sincerity. And Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, أَثَرْ which is موقوف, he يعني stops at Abdullah ibn Abbas, that he said, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, ينال المرء a person will attain al-ilma biqadri niyati in accordance to his intention. A person will gain knowledge in accordance to his what? His intention. If your intention is high, Allah will give you more. If your intentions are more. And that's why the person who has sincerity, he's always on that path. He believes, die on this path of seeking knowledge. صح? That's why Imam Ahmed, when they said to him, إلا متى, إلا متى, How long are you going to carry on seeking knowledge? At an old age, they saw Ahmed ibn Hanbal carrying logs and ink, and he was still writing. And they said, For how long are you going to be doing this to yourself? And then he said, From the cradle to the grave, inshallah ta'ala. Min al mahbarati ila al mahbara. This is going to be forever, man. It's not going to stop. And brothers, The child needs how many parents? Two parents, a father and a mother. So, things in the West have now changed. So, so, father and a what? And a mother. Knowledge or the person who we can call a person of knowledge, he has to have two of those things. لَيْسَ الْيَتِيمُ مَنْ مَا تَوَالِدُ إِنَّ الْيَتِيمَ the real orphan is the one who has no knowledge and he doesn't have mannerism to couple it with. Are we all together, brothers? If you don't have knowledge and you don't have manners, you are still upon your natural state that you should have left before. You're oppressive and you're ignorant. This is how you Wallahu Akhrajakum min Butuni Ummahatikum la ta'alamuna shay'a Ama Nada Kira Immihatikum Coming out of the womb of your mother not knowing anything. So you haven't left that stage? 
should have left that. Now you're, mashallah, 20, 30, 15. You should have gained knowledge. And that oppression, which goes against the characteristics of student knowledge, they all should go. Are we all together, brothers? So the first of those characteristics is sincerity. One of the qualities of a student of knowledge is that the sincerity pushes you to what? Sincerity pushes you to loving good for other people. Talib ilm gets happy when another Talib ilm spreads the, the knowledge. And he makes dua for him and he asks Allah to preserve him and honor him. If he's calling to the khayr and the sunnah and the deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla, it brings happiness and joy to you. Why? Because the number of people who call to Allah's deen is little. And those within the callers who is calling to the true path is also even less. فَهُمْ أَقَلُّ مِنَ الْقَلِيلِ تَلَيْ The little than the littles that are already out there. So it brings you sincerity, that's what it pushes you to. Are we all together brothers? Sincerity will make you say what you don't know. I don't know this thing. Don't ask me, I don't have knowledge of this matter. وَالْكُلُّ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَنَاحِ الْأَرْبَعَةِ يَقُولُ لَا أَدْرِي فَكُنْ مُتَّبِعَةِ الإمام أبو حنيفة, مالك, الشافع, الأحمد, four imams. All of them, when they didn't know a matter, it was easy for them to say, لَا أَدْرِي I don't know. Because they were sincere people. They knew if they didn't know, and they spoke about this matter. وَلَا تَقُولُ لِمَا تَصِفُ أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبَ هَذَا حَلَالُ وَهَذَا حَرَامُ لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لَا يُفْلِحُونَ قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ To speak about Allah's religion with no knowledge, for them it was something very bad. Why would they do that? ولذلك the sincerity of theirs pushed them towards what? To say, I don't know. A man came to Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of the great companion Umar ibn Khattab. So he asked him a question. Umar said, La Abdullah ibn Umar said, La adiri. He asked him another question. Abdullah ibn Umar said, La adiri. He asked him another question. He said, La adiri. And he said to him, You're a companion. You studied under the Prophet. That's what some people do to you. They make you feel like you. Yani, uh, how comes you don't know? Look what Abdullah ibn Umar said. He said, I don't know. And I don't know is half of knowledge. La adiri is nisful al. My shaykh used to say, it doesn't mean you say la adri twice and then that means you've got full knowledge. La adri, la adri, that's it. No, it means is once you've acknowledged that you don't know, half of the effort is already there. Now you, all you just have to do is go look for it. Are we all together, brother? Recognition is very important. If a person doesn't acknowledge that they did a sin, are they going to repent? So halfway towards repentance is what? To acknowledge that you did a mistake, right? When our mother Aisha was falsely accused of zina, uh, falsely, falsely accused of zina, radi, uh, anha, the Prophet entered the house and he said to her, Ya Aisha, in al mamti al dhab, if you if you did this sin that's been said about you, fa'atari fi dhab, recognize this mistake first of all, thumma tubi ila Allah, then repent to Allah. So first you have to recognize the sin and then you ask for forgiveness. Does that make sense? So when a person says, I don't know. That's half of knowledge. The next half is now you just have to go and look, look for it. And that's not only humility, you're going to gain a lot of knowledge when you have that sincerity of saying, I don't know, because you're going to go and look for it. But if you say, I am Shaykh al Kulli fil Kulli, I know everything. You just ask me, inshallah, ta'ala, I'll answer it. I have it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Then you won't stop and go look for things because you think you know it, sir. So the first, my brothers and sisters, is sincerity. The second one is as-sidqu fi talab Being truthful in seeking knowledge. There's a difference between ikhlas and sidqiya. The sidqiya means that when you're seeking knowledge, you're not associating partners with the knowledge. Some people, when they're reading and they're studying, they have their phone right next to them. And as they're reading, someone can call them and say, Akhi, ha, ayya jazakallah khairan. They put the phone down. No. If you really are seeking knowledge, that time that you're seeking knowledge, get rid of everything that's going to distract you. Be truthful to it. Give it everything. Are we all together, brothers? Knowledge does not accept partnership. It doesn't. You have to give everything you have. That's why the Salaf used to say, Man a'ta al-ilma kullah. Anyone who gives knowledge everything, 
أعطته it will give you بعضه some of it it will give you something in return it can't give you all knowledge no one's got all knowledge but it will give you something in return but you have to give everything are we all together brothers? so that time that you're studying you give all of it the third inshallah ta'ala is high aspiration a student of knowledge should not stop himself at saying I just want to know the basics of my my knowledge so I can just benefit my community Abadan. Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah said a very powerful statement he said kamal al-aqli uluul himma warradi biduni dani kamal al-aqli uluul himma he said if you want to see a person whose aql is complete smart individual he has high aspiration warradi biduni dani and anyone who is happy with like the bare minimum yeah I don't mind he said that person is dani insignificant person no value إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ مَعَالِيَ الْأُمُورِ وَيَكْرَهُ سَفْسَافَهَا Allah loves the best of affairs. He doesn't like those. He doesn't like those things which are. That's why the Prophet said, إِلَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ الْجَنَّةِ If you guys are going to ask Allah for Jannah, فَسَأَلُوهُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ Ask Allah for Jannah to Firdaus. Don't just say, oh Allah, just take me to Jannah. I don't care which Jannah it is. I, just, I want to get in there. No, don't say that. You're a Muslim. You should have high aspirations of what you achieve. You should say, Ya Rabb, I want Jannah to Firdaus, the highest level. Are we all together, brothers? Do you know what they say about the lion? They say lions don't eat dead corpse. The lion has to hunt for himself. You guys watch Discovery Channel, right? Yeah? You don't watch Discovery Channel? What's it called? National Ge Geography. Yeah? Oh, if you watch this stuff, there's a lot of benefits of what in it. That's why the lion is called the king of the... King of what? Yeah? Why is he the king of the jungle? Because he's got high aspiration, simple as. The lion's goals are high. Are we all together, brothers? That's why the hyena and all of those, they just take the dead corpse and there's nothing. Abanin. Sah? So, brothers, high aspiration. Set yourself a high goal and work towards that. Ulul him is very high, brothers. It's very important. And you, you see that. Al Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah. And Yahya ibn Ma'in came together. Ibn Khalikan mentioned in his Wafayatul Ayyad. There have been mentioned in his Seer Alam in Nubala, in the Tarjama of Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah, that Ahmad ibn Hamad Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he came to, uh, they wanted to go to Yemen and meet Abdul Razak ibn Hamam al Sun'an. He's another scholar of Hadith. Him and Yahya ibn Ma'in. What they did was, they came to the Kaaba to do Umrah. When they came, guess who they found? Abdul Razak and Hamam Sal Ali in the Kaaba. Yahya ibn Ma'in said to Abdul Razak, Yahya ibn Ma'in said to Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, we don't have to travel to Yemen now. Here is Abdul Razak. They realized after they had a conversation with him, just by talking to him, they knew him. Not because they saw him, there's no YouTube and Facebook and all that doesn't exist. They only recognized him through the chains of the hadith because every person of that time, whenever they narrated a hadith, they would have to mention their shuyukh. Sah? al isnadu min al-deen, walawla al-isnadu laqala man sha'a man sha'a. Sah? The chain is the religion. And if anybody doesn't يعني, use the chain, their, their knowledge will not have been accepted. Because everybody can say whatever they want without no chain. Sah? This is, I think, Sufyan of story or Sufyan ibn Uyayna, one of the two Sufyan. They said, Al-Isnadu Silahul Mu'min. That the Isnad is the, the, the weapon of the believer. فَإِن لَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ سِلَاحٌ فَكَيْفَ يُقَاتِلُ Are you fighting? If you don't have your chain, yeah? And mashallah, this is Jamiat al hadith sah? It's an Al-Isnad, chain for everything. So they recognized by the discussion, they recognized this is Abdul Razak ibn Hamam al-San'an. Yahya said, look, let's stay. Let's stay and benefit from him. Ahmed said, La, high aspiration. He said, no. Let Abdul Rizal go to Yemen, we're going to go to Yemen. Because that was our initial intention. I did not leave Baghdad for me to come and take from him here. He came for Ibadah, and we came here for Ibadah. We had an intention when we left, and we were not going to, we're not going to change our intention now. 
he went and he met him in what? In Yemen and he took from him over there. Are we all together, brothers? Does that make sense? Some of the scholars mentioned that no, Ahmed Yahya forced him to take it from him here. And Ahmed finally accepted. The point I'm trying to say, brothers, is high aspiration. The fourth, inshallah ta'ala, is al-amalu bil-ilm. The knowledge Allah has given you, you have to act upon it. وَعَالِمٌ بِعِلْمِهِ لَمْ يَعْمَلًا مُعَذَّبٌ قَبْلَ عُبَّادِ الْوَثَنِ The one who has knowledge, but he doesn't act upon that knowledge, he's going to be what? He's going to be punished even before the what? The grave worshippers or idol worshippers. This is referring to the hadith of the first people who Allah is going to take them to the hellfire, the day of judgment is who? Three groups of people. From them is who? A alim who has gained knowledge, who has understanding of the deed, he didn't act upon it, he's going to be punished because he didn't act upon the knowledge that he was given. All he had was information. Are you commanding the people something and you and yourself are not doing it? Where's your aql gone? Kabura maqtan عند الله أن تقولوا ما لا تفعلون Why are you saying something and going out against it? That's why Nabila Shu'ayb said to his people when he was commanding them, he said, وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُخَالِفَكُمْ إِلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْهِ I am not going to go against the thing that I am telling you guys. I'm not going to go against it. I'm going to follow through myself with these things. I'm telling you guys to do it. Sahab brothers. Um, when I was young, my father gave an example. A good example that always stuck with me. He said, your mother, when she was giving you food when you were a kid, she put those food in your mouth. She'd only give you another spoon if you swallowed what was already given to you. And he said, the knowledge is like that as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he gives you knowledge, if you go and act upon the one that was given to you, Allah will give you more. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى huh? You'll be given, you acted upon it, okay, give him more. Acted upon it, give it more. And knowledge stays with what? Implementation. يَحْتِفُ الْعِلْمَ الْعَمَلِ فَإِنْ أَجَابَهُ وَإِلَّا اَخْتَحَلْ The Salaf used to say this. Knowledge calls for actions. Action, come here, he says. If actions don't, doesn't come, knowledge leaves. Are we all together, brothers? With some of the Salaf, they used to say, Kunna nasta'inu. We used to strengthen our understanding of the deen with acting upon it. That was one of our ways to keep it. And we all know that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith of Abu Abdul Rahman al-Sulami, Abdullah ibn Habib. What did he say? Haddathana al-ladheena kanu yuqri'oonana al-Qur'an. That the people... The Sahabas, like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Uthman ibn Affan and others told us and they would never go beyond and above 10 verses. They would memorize it, he said. And then would act upon it. And then they would take another 10. They will not take more if they didn't act upon what was given to them. And Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, as you know, he has the, one of the biggest books or the biggest book that we have right now in Hadith collection, right? Imam Ahmad, or one of the biggest. He's Musnad, right? And Imam Ahmad, they asked him, did you act upon every hadith that you have memorized? He said, yes. Except one hadith. And that was to do hijama and give the man who gave, he did the hijama the amount of money that the Prophet gave to him, which is one dinar, giving that, that money. Are we all together, brothers? Yani, some things of the hadith, the Salaf used to say, even if it's not wajib, but you've heard it, so you don't fall under the ayah, kabura maqtan indallahi, and taqulu ma la taf'alun, if'alhu walaw barra, do even once. Just so at least you're a person who did it. Are we all together, brothers? The fifth, inshallah ta'ala, is adam usti'jali fi talab in nata'iji wa thimar. When it comes to seeking knowledge, a lot of people want to learn it fast. And they're like, why is it not changing? Why am I not seeing the outcome? I've been memorizing every day I go over the hadith. I forget it in the evening. Knowledge is your life. 
You have to not give up in seeking knowledge. You have to keep going over it again and again and again and again, brothers. It requires your life. They asked that Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, what is the cure for memorization? What did he say? He said, نَهْمَةُ الرَّجُلِ وَمُدَاوَمَةُ النَّظَرِ he said the cure for memorization is this drive within you and also going revising and going over things again and again and again. You're finishing the Quran so often. You're going against the book, you're going over the books that you you've read before. You keep going over them again and again and again. You have like a program where you start the Athara of Ibn al Qayyim and you finish it. Ibn al Qayyim's books has a manhajiya, muqtaraha. في قراءة مؤلفاته to read his works you read those books and every maybe eight months nine months you finish it Ibn Taymiyyah you have a برنامج of how to read his works وهكذا this is the مطالعة حرة and then the novels and the books that you need to memorize you have your program how to memorize it the new ones and the old ones how you revise it every so you can keep it so you don't lose it all of this is a lifetime thing Sheikh Albani died at the age of uh, 83 84 صح تقريباً رحمه الله تعالى. and one of the first books he wrote was his كتاب اتخاذ الساجد where he talks about the issue of huh? grave taking the uh, taking uh, the uh, masajid to the graveyards and it's the thing that the prophet cursed five days before he died. he said لعن الله اليهود والنصارى اتخذوا قبور أنبيائهم مساجد. may Allah has cursed be upon the Christians and the Jews. they took the graveyards of their prophets a place of worship. Do you, know the, do you know the time between these two books? His last, his kitab is Thamrat Mustatab, which he didn't finish, he died at the age of 84. He died writing that book. And his Itikhad is Sajid. Do you know how many years was between it? The first book he wrote was 23. When he died, it was what? 84, 83. How many years between them? 60 years, sah? 60, 60 years he's been in the science of hadith. يصحح ويضعف ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك عويل وكسير والثالث ليس فيه خير and then after that comes عويل or كسير a third one that has no benefit and then he says شيخ الألباني he doesn't know what he's talking about صح ألا تستحي صح brothers it shocks me sometimes I'm reading his سلسلة حديث الصحيحة and then I hear شيخ الألباني said وصححت هذا الحديث قرابة أربعين سنة أو قبل أربعين سنة it was 40 years ago when I authenticated this hadith. And I went back to check it and I, I still see it to be da'if or I still see it to be sahih. 40 years. 50 years. Do you, are you with me, brothers? It's a lifetime thing now. That's what you have to understand. The minute you come in, you have to realize this is it's, 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 it's a lifetime. That's why sometimes it can have a bad effect on these Intensive courses that are being done sometimes can have a bad effect, which is to make the student think after two weeks of this Dora Ilmiya, I'm a Dora Mukathafa, he's going to be Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And in reality, all it is is what? Microwave of knowledge. That's it. You can just warm the food up with the microwave. You can't cook food on the microwave, can you? I don't know about the new ones that come out. But... So you have to understand. This can have a negative side effect. The last one, inshallah ta'ala, that I'm going to mention from the characteristics that we should adorn ourselves with is sticking with the people of knowledge. Mulazamatul ulama. Wa ilmi minhum to take knowledge from the ulama. You have to have knowledge, scholars. And this is this is for everyone and also the tulab al ilm wa in sahatu da'wa. That you have ulama, that you have on speed speed dial. That you go back to, you call them and say, Shaykh, this is an opinion that's come to me. I've researched this issue. Ma Shaykh, I'm going to send it to you. Can you look at it? Can you give me your opinion, Shaykh? Um, Shaykh, uh, I've said this statement and this statement, and I'm on a doubt whether I should have said it on. Nasiha, nasa'ih. Mulazamatul ulama, brothers, in seeking knowledge is important. The Prophet said to the companions, Showing us the importance of everyone taking from from the Prophet and the Sahabas and the Tabi'in, Atba'u Tabi'in, like that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he told the Sahabas and he said to them, Tasma'una minni, Tasma'una wa yusma'u minkum wa yusma'u minkum, you will hear from me. 
and they, th there's people who are going to hear from you guys, and those people are going, other people are going to hear from them, and that's a program that we all Muslims need to follow, which is what take it from the scholars. The poet he said, يظن الغمر أن الكتب تهدي أخا فهم لإدراك العلوم وما يدري الجهول بأن فيها غوامض قد حيرت عقل الفهيم إذا رمت العلوم بغير شيخ ضللت عن السراط المستقيم وتلتبس العلوم عليك حتى تصير أضل من توم الحكيم. He said the miskin individual, he thinks by buying books, yeah, I'm putting them on the shelf and reading those books. يظن الغمر أن الكتب تهدي. You think these books are going to guide you? Shatibi mentioned this before in his Kitab al-Muwafaqat that he said that the knowledge before was in the chest of the people of knowledge and they then chose to write this knowledge in the books but guess what? They still got the keys in their hands. It's like a door, you can see it but they're all locked. You need the keys and then not only do you need the keys you need to be told which key is for which door or you're going to waste your time trying this key and then it's not this key, let me try the other key, it's not working, then the other key. When you speak to the scholars, they will save you time and they will tell you the loops and the mistakes that they fell into, the shortcomings, and they'll correct everything for you. And you'll save much more time and you will not fall into the mistakes that other people fall into. So that's why the problem is when some people choose not to go to the ulama and the people of knowledge and they read themselves and they, yeah, and they understand something from what they read. I remember one time, we, I was very, very young, very young. I'm still young. I was a baby at that time. I was in a uh, haram, and a brother was teaching Al Arba'un and Nawawiyah. So he asked all of you guys, What have you memorized? So I said, I memorized Arba'un and Bulugh. And he said, okay, Bulugh is not everybody here has memorized it. Let's do Arba'un Nawiyah. I said, okay, no problem. Let's do Arba'un Nawiyah. Arba'un Nawiyah, what's the second hadith? You all know it, right? Arba'un Nawiyah, second hadith. It's hadith Jibreel. The first hadith is Inna Ma'amalu Bin Yat. And the second one is hadith Jibreel. Bainama nahnu julusun inda Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ilati yawmin ittala alayna rajulun shadidu bayati tiyam. Shadidu sawadi al-sha'ri la yura alayhi atharu safar. ولا يعرفه منا أحد حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسند ركبتي إلى ركبتي ووضع كفي على فخذي وقال يا محمد أخبرني عن الإسلام the long hadith if you look at the beginning of the hadith if you go to by the way Nawawi was very smart and clever when he wrote these two hadiths the first one hadith إنما العمال بنيات بخاري starts with it hadith جبريل مسلم starts with it صح if you go to صحيح مسلم and you check how this hadith of Jibreel was actually mentioned, you will know that it was Abdullah ibn Umar, two men came to him, Humayd ibn Abdul Rahman al-Himyari and Yahya ibn Ya'mar, صح? They came to Abdullah ibn Umar, Hajjaini or Mu'tamirayni was either Hajj or Umrah, and they wanted to complain about a people who came out from their land, okay, who was Qadariyya. And they named a man by the name of Ma'bad al-Juhani. So the brother who's teaching us, he didn't study with the shiukh. This is the problem I'm trying to show you. He didn't study with the shiukh. He read books by himself. We didn't know that. We find out later. And this is how the mistake comes from. So he shares the hadith with us. He says to us the hadith, uh, Ma'bad al-Juhani. Do you know Ma'bad al-Juhani says? Ma'bad, he said, it's an idol that the people of Juhani used to worship. In Arabic, it's Sah. Ma'bad is a place where people come and worship. And Al Juhani, he said it's a tribe. Which is true, it's a tribe. But is that what the hadith is? Is that what they asked Abdullah ibn Umar? Where Mr. Keith, which is listening to the Darsan, Allahu Akbar, Jazakallah khair al Shaykh, we left. This is the problem. So if you don't take from the ulama and the people of knowledge, this is what happens. You read a book, you don't understand that the word Sahih in Ilm al Hadith is different to Sahih in Ilm al Sarf. In Sarf, when they say, say Sahih, what do they mean by this? Huh? No, in, in, in Sarf, morphology, in Arabic morphology, when they say Sahih, what do they mean? They say, Sahih is a harf, um, a word, khali an huruf al illa. There's no letter of defect, it's not there. Wow, Alif Ya is not in that word. Harf, which is Sahih, صح? is healthy, not in that state. Are we all together, brothers? And when you say Sahih and Mustalah al-Hadith or the science of Hadith, what's Sahih? 
ومتى صلى سنده صح is what is chain of narration is connected the narrators are ضابطين عدل عدم الشدود وعل وعدم علة القادحة صح somebody doesn't know that when he sees صحيح in science of hadith and when he sees صحيح in what and now what about sul fiqh they use the same word صحيح what do they mean this عمل is صحيح and this عمل is فاسد they mean something else by it بريت به ذمة it's one word but in every science it has a meaning this miskin he only knows one so he's going through all of them with one definition. How would you know that it means different in this science than this science? Then this science is when you take knowledge from its what? From its people. I am told to stop here, inshallah ta'ala. Um, inshallah ta'ala. Another time we're going to do the second. Another time we'll talk about al-manhajiyatul ilmiya that is needed to understand uh, knowledge. May Allah preserve you all. Uh, forgive me for any mistakes or shortcomings. And if I've said anything to offend anyone, I, I honestly apologize. Um, subhanakallah. Anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan. And Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu